Hi, it's Heather. I'm back because I had orientation this last week and I wanted to um, do just a video to discuss what things we went over in orientation. I don't know if other people are interested, but um, I've been interested for a while now to see what was going to be discussed. I like to get all information I can possibly get before I actually have to do something. So uh, I've been kind of looking around on YouTube trying to find videos about what I might learn at orientation. So. Uh, we had introductions of staff and the other students who were there. There is going to be another orientation session um, next week. We had two options to attend one of the two mandatory orientation sessions. We discussed the behavior policies, grading policies, things like that. So this particular program, the grades are structured slightly differently. Uh, it doesn't use a 10 point scale for grades. Anything below a 75 is considered failing. So that's on tests, that's on overall class grades. If you get anything below a 75, you are in trouble and you may have to leave the program if you don't uh, have some sort of remediation or way to pull your grade up. They also discussed there being uh, skills that we have to check off in labs and you get two chances to check off your lab skills and if you fail it's a pass fail it's not graded other than that uh, if you fail twice you are out of the program and have to reapply and start over entirely but they did also stress that they try very hard to make sure that no one fails their lab twice um, if you miss a lab and you miss learning some of those skills, you may find yourself in trouble. So they said it's really important to make sure that you attend every lab session. But they do try to make sure that we are given the information we need to pass our lab skills. Um, what else did they discuss about grading? Not much else about grading as far as, I mean, they just went over the grading scale and made sure that everyone understood that it's not, you know, an A is something like 94 and above. So it's a slightly different scale. Uh, we had a lot of documents that we had to sign as far as acknowledging the policies that we were given, HIPAA forms, um, information about, you know, that we understand there's medical risk as far as being exposed to disease and things like that. So we had a bunch of forms that we filled out and signed. I've, I've got paperwork I'm just looking at just to um, make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, registration for classes for the fall starts on July 1st at noon. And if you want to get a specific lab section, we have to make sure we register right away. I don't know how many people they allow in each section, but I know which one I want. So I'm going to try very hard to make sure that I'm registering right at the at noon on the 1st. Um, the classes we did find out what our schedule will be as far as in general we don't know specifically which of the three lab sections we're going to be in until we until we actually register but we know when those they're all on the same day just at different times so the classes that i will be taking in the fall are going to be fundamental theory and procedures for respiratory care cardiopulmonary science diagnostic therapeutic procedures pharmacology and that's going to be it so one of those the carmen Cardiopulmonary Science is the class that I was um, enrolled in last semester and ended up dropping in order to take a psychology class that I thought that I needed that I didn't end up, end up needing. But anyway, so I, I do have to take that one. Not everyone in my program still has to take that. Some people have already finished that one. So we are going to be in class Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Typically depends on when your lab time is, but anywhere from, I'm hoping that my schedule will pretty much just start at around 10 or 11, depending on the day, and end by three on most days. Um, the pharmacology class is only a seven week class that's towards the end of the semester. So um, that's, a, that's a class that, that runs until, um, oh, that one, that one ends at noon. Oh, my other class ends at six. So, so anyway, so it's not going to be hugely long days. I'm not there at 7 a.m. unless I get the really early lab, which I hope not. That would be my least favorite one. Um, 
on only three days a week of actual class time. We do not do clinicals until the spring semester, so I will not be doing clinicals, and that means I do not need to buy scrubs until spring semester because our program does not require us to wear scrubs for class, only for clinicals. Um, I will be getting teal scrubs when the time comes. We don't have any restriction on what company we have to buy from. We don't have any restriction on the color of shoes. They do just need to be appropriate for uh, work. But um, I will be buying shoes to wear to clinicals. I'm not going to buy anything before I have to go to clinicals in all likelihood. I'll just wear um, the tennis shoes I already have, probably. We'll see. Um, they talked about book fees and data arc fees, which data arc is the, um, the program that's used to track your clinical hours and what skills you've checked off in clinicals and in lab and, and those things. So um, we were told that in our first semester of clinical, so spring semester, um, we have to have 300 hours in a clinical setting in that semester. So um, that will be data arc is what you, you log in when you show up at clinical and then you log out when you leave so that they can keep track of how many hours you've done at clinical. Um, the other things that they have said that we are going to need are a stethoscope, of course, which I do already have a stethoscope. I can do another video on these extra little things. We need a watch with a second hand, which I have to get. I don't like wristwatches. I'm thinking of getting a lapel clip or pin watch um, because I, I just don't like wearing things around my wrist. If you have any other ideas for me besides a pin or a clip lapel watch, let me know. Um, and they do have on the list a portable pulse oximeter, um, but that that's optional. And one of the instructors said that he doesn't recommend getting one. I actually already have one. Um, so, I mean, if I if it's something I find I'm, is useful during lab or something like that, I'll bring it with me. Otherwise, it could just sit in my drawer at home. Um, they talked about other additional fees besides tuition and books that we are going to have the background check, um, drug screening, and the document manager for those things, which is $200 approximately. We have to do a physical, we have to get immunizations and titers. They did explain that even if you have your immunization records showing that you got your shots, um, that you still have to have blood work done. You still have to have uh, your titers drawn um, to show that you still have immunity to those things because of course there are certain people who even though they've been immunized, they do not have the immunity still. They, don't have, they aren't showing the antibodies in their blood. So that is something that we do have to have titers drawn even if we can show shot records. Um, I actually had my titers pulled last year, so I know that I am immune to those, but the blood work is too old, so I'll have to have it done again. I also have to get up to date on Hep B. They said previously, as long as you had started the Hep B schedule before going to clinicals, you were allowed to go, but that has changed, and we now have to be finished with the Hep B schedule before we start clinicals. So I think we actually have to be finished with our Hep B shots by December. And there's, you have to take three shots and it's something like two months in between. And then after the third shot, you have to wait another certain, like a few weeks or something like that. And then you have to have titers drawn for that separately. So that's something I have to get on right away. I'm probably going to go see if I can just go to a Walgreens or something like that today to get the first of those shots because I don't want to get behind on that because, I mean, it's not something you can control as far as how much time you have to wait in between those shots. So Hep B we have to do. Um, we do have to get a TB test and a Tdap shot. Um, obviously, you know, that's something you have to do a, a tetanus um, a TB test every year. Uh, regardless of, of when you last got your shot, that's something that you just have to do. And then we have to have titers for rubella, rubiola, mumps, and chicken pox. Um, so those are the titers that we're going to have to have pulled. And they said not to go and do that right now, not to do the physical right now, to wait until they let us know um, that it's time to do those things because it has to be done within a certain amount of time for certain things. Anyway, I don't get it all. I'm just going to wait until I get the email telling me to go do it. Um, we have to have CPR certification, the um, 
BLS for healthcare providers, I already have that, so I don't have to worry about that. Talked about making sure that you have all your transcript information. Um, and then they showed us a video from um, AARC, which is life and breath. It's a video about respiratory therapy and what respiratory therapists do. And I've actually already watched that. I will include a link to that down uh, below. So if you haven't watched that and you're interested in, to see what respiratory therapists do, you can watch that. It gives you a pretty good idea. Um, so that was a quick run through of everything. Um, they talked about there is a distance learning option for at my school. I am not doing that. I know myself as a student and I much prefer to be in person in classes. The distance learning students can do lecture online, but they do still have to come onto campus for the lab portion. So it's not like you can live, you know, really far away because you do still have to come to campus once a week. You just don't have to come to campus more often for lecture. So distance learning is for people who just live slightly further away who don't want to drive in several times a week, but you still have to drive in at least once for lab. Um, I think that may have been it. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, book. We did get our book list. Uh, we have to get Egan's Respiratory Care Exam Review, Clinical Assessment and Respiratory Care, and Cardiopulmonary A&P um, which not everyone has to get that one because that's for the um, that's for the one class that I still have to take that some other people have not or have, I still have to take it other people do not because they've already taken it. Uh, apparently some people also still have to take the second semester of regular anatomy and physiology and uh, some people apparently haven't done the intro to respiratory therapy class yet. Um, I guess they were they relaxed the requirements a little bit to allow people to apply to the program even if they hadn't done that class because that was one of the ones where we were told we had to have that in order to apply. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that I did. It gave me a better idea about what the job is going to be before actually applying to the program. So I would much rather have, have done that and, and know what it might be like and what I might be doing. Um, I mean, that's the whole idea behind that intro to respiratory therapy is just to give you some baseline information so that you can make a determination if that's the career you want to pursue. So I think that's pretty much it. It was a good orientation. Took a little bit over two hours. Um, again, lots of paperwork to sign, but lots of good information. Glad to figure out what my schedule, at least basically the days wise, what my schedule is going to be so that I can figure out. Um, what things to have my kids signed up for on what days and how I'm going to work getting kids, well, my son places, my daughter has her own car, she drives herself around, so, um, but yeah, it was interesting, had a really good time, can't wait to see who else is in my cohort from my respiratory therapy class that I already took, there were one, two, three, four, I think there were four or five of us, maybe even six, um, that had been in my intro to respiratory therapy class who were at this orientation, but there is still one orientation day left, so there could be more people from that class um, going on that day. So I will do, I think I'll probably do another video about my, um, what stethoscope I bought and, and uh, maybe a video about why I chose the school that I did and what the differences are between a bachelor's program and an associate's program. I am doing an associate's program. Um, so I think I'll do another video about going into why I did that and um, the options as far as going on to a bachelor's if you complete an associate's first. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope everyone's doing well and I hope you enjoyed learning about what I got to uh, learn about in orientation. I'm blathering now. Bye!